James Kerchik, The End of Europe, Dictators, Demagogues, and the Coming Dark Age. Prepare to delve into At the End of Europe, Dictators, Demagogues, and the Coming Dark Age, as author James Kerchik examines the main forces challenging Europe and the European Union's stability. In the decades following World War II, Europe has been a hub of social progress, economic growth, and peace. Kerchik investigates the various factors contributing to Europe's impending crisis, ranging from Russia's aggressive nationalism, surge of hot-headed populists, Brexit, anti-Islamic sentiments, rise of anti-Semitism, and issues surrounding immigration from Muslim-majority countries. Get ready to explore Europe's current socio-political landscape, and understand how these threats contribute to the potential decline of the EU. The End of the EU Europe, after World War II, was characterized by economic affluence, social progressiveness, and a low-level military presence. The European Union EU, was regarded as a world power and a counterbalance to the US, with more humane and tolerant values. However, the EU's era of peace and prosperity seems to be over, and there is a variety of forces that are contributing to its collapse. The most obvious split is the UK's decision to leave the EU. Prior to Brexit, a financial crisis showed the imprudence of preserving outdated welfare states. European anti-Muslim sentiment, anti-Semitism, and bellicose nationalism in Russia and Hungary further rupture the EU. Instead of electing noble leaders like Václav Havel and Lech Walesa, Europeans seem to prefer hot-headed populists like Viktor Orban, Jean-Marie, and Marine Le Pen, and Miloš Zeman. This trend is reflected in low voter turnout for parliamentary elections, suggesting that Europeans prefer renationalization of politics over regular business. Despite these challenges, the EU remains a vital ally to the US, sharing the American zeal for free trade, free speech, and religious freedoms. To quote Winston Churchill, the EU may be the worst system of governing Europe, but it is better than any of the alternatives. Russia's Path to Authoritarianism Putin's Russia is a destabilizing force, with a leader who seems more intent on lining his pockets and recasting Stalin as a patriot than on rebuilding the Soviet Union. More than half of Russians now have a favorable view of Stalin, while Putin positions Russia as the anti-Europe, a place of traditional values without the political correctness of Europe and America. Putin's Russian exceptionalism evokes Hitler's talking points of victimization and ethnic oppression, and Russia's trajectory is now purely authoritarian, as illustrated by its tampering with the 2016 U.S. presidential election. Hungary's Dangerous Nationalist Path The rise of Prime Minister Viktor Orban in Hungary has led to revisionist history where the country portrays itself as a victim. Hungary's Holocaust participation has been rewritten and nationalism and intolerance are on the rise. Orban's pro-Christian and anti-Muslim stance has led to conflicts with Brussels, and his disregard for Hungary's role in the Holocaust is just one way he breaks with European orthodoxy. Germany's Political Ambivalence Despite being a supporter of European unification and NATO, Germany's political culture has never been quite as loose as the French and English, nor quite as tightly wound as Hungary's and Russia's. The country's ambivalence towards American policy became obvious during the Gulf War when German troops sat out the conflict, but the government wrote an $11 billion check to support the US and its allies. Although Germans carry deep scars from World War II, the nation remains less than loved among its European neighbors, and only a quarter of them think their nation should play an active military role in the world. The fact that Germany is Europe's largest nation underscores its disengagement in military conflicts and raises its political profile. Europe's Immigration Backlash Germany and other European countries have long embraced unlimited immigration as a way to make up for their shameful legacy of genocide and racism. However, the rise of anti-immigrant sentiments in Sweden and Germany, and the official cover-up of criminal behavior by immigrants across Europe, suggest a growing backlash against this policy. The populist Sweden Democrats, with neo-Nazi roots, gained widespread support by limiting immigration. Even in Germany, 
where hate speech laws are broad and enforced, the anti-immigrant movement Pejita is gaining ground. The problem is not just with refugees but also with the political correctness that enslaves Europe, stifling any criticism of immigration. Rising Antisemitism in Europe Despite Europe's emphasis on political correctness, antisemitism is on the increase and Jews are experiencing attacks across the continent. This sentiment is most evident in France, with 850 attacks in 2014 alone. The tension between Jews and Muslims, further fueled by Israel's policies, is straining the multicultural nation's ability to integrate both communities successfully. Anti-Semitic acts are becoming increasingly normalized throughout Europe, with acts such as arson against synagogues being justified as protests. As a result, French Jews are leaving in significant numbers, a trend projected to continue unless addressed. Brexit and the EU's relevance in 2016, the UK voted to leave the EU despite opposition from union leaders, economists, and the Bank of England. Boris Johnson, the former Brussels correspondent for the Daily Telegraph, and Nigel Farage, his Brexit ally, spread conspiracy theories about the EU that lacked evidence. Johnson's dispatches contained dreadful lies. He and Farage played fast and loose with the truth. Johnson claimed the EU tricked Greece into joining and staged a coup in Ukraine, but this lacked evidence as well. Brexit highlights the EU's problem with remaining relevant. The EU is an imperfect system, but it's the best option Europe has. Although advocates of the EU promote political cooperation and ensuring world peace, most nations view EU membership as transactional. They expect to receive something of value in return. In Mediterranean nations with 50% youth unemployment, the advantages of EU membership seem hazy. For many working-class Britons, EU membership brought more than a million transplants from Eastern Europe who worked for long hours at low wages, which led to downsides. Greece and the Euro's Fundamental Flaw Greece's financial crisis of 2010 did not arise due to the fundamental flaw in the Euro, as widely believed. On the contrary, it was a result of Greece's lack of fiscal discipline over the years. The country disregarded the Maastricht Treaty's 3% deficit-to-GDP ratio limit and misled the EU about its financial state to gain entry into the Eurozone. Greek citizens, especially retired public employees, received pensions that were far above the average for public pensions in the Western world, and only a fraction of Greeks worked in their 50s and 60s. Thus, their profligate spending led to Greece's economic collapse and required the International Monetary Fund's largest loan in history to rescue it. While a single currency was more efficient for an increasingly global economy, Greece's case highlights the importance of maintaining fiscal discipline irrespective of the currency adopted. As we conclude our journey through the end of Europe, we can observe the major concerns affecting the future of the EU. James Kerchik has shed light on the pressing issues challenging Europe's peace and stability. Some of these contributing factors include the emerging populist movements, Europe's relationship with Russia, rising anti-Semitism, and the consequences of growing anti-Islamic sentiment across the continent. Additionally, the aftermath of Brexit and the flawed approach to immigration policies have led to growing divisions among European countries. Kerchik provides a comprehensive analysis of these crucial subjects, that are greatly contributing to the possible decline of the European Union, 